It's time for a cautionary tale. Look at this graph, all right? All is going pretty sound for a long time. And then something happens that causes this game to absolutely get demolished by its own users. This is a very interesting story of a game that looks extremely promising as a game, mm -hmm. but where some business moves happen that result in a humongous and I think very pointed community backlash. It's a yeah. very interesting story. Yeah. And it's the sort of thing that with how money's floating around these days, you know, can, can happen. Yeah, imagine you've got yourself an early access Hearthstone Battlegrounds competitor that your users are calling substantially better. It's free to play. It doesn't have a lot of microtransaction bullshit. It's like early access. You see, you know, there's big names behind it who have lots of card game experience. You're thinking, whoa, could this be like the auto chess, like an auto battler that does really well? And then they shoot themselves in the feet. Yes. Then we get this tweet. We've got mm. huge news today. We are thrilled to announce that Good Luck Games, the studio that makes Storybook Brawl, has been acquired by FTX Official. For more on what that means now in the future, read on. Okay, who are FTX? Well, FTX are, of course, a cryptocurrency exchange, billing themselves as being built by traders for traders, saying they offer innovative products, including industry-first derivatives, options, uh, volatility, volatility products, and leveraged tokens. Uh, essentially, if you're, you know, wanting to... If you're buying, and say, like a Coinbase or something, from what I understand, that is uh, more for, like, investing storing, managing your assets, where they are billing themselves more as being for trading, right? So trading, that's how you you maybe learn of somebody who did a YOLO. They did a leveraged YOLO. And, you know, ba-bam, they have 13,000% returns. Mm -hmm. But then, of course, you have all the other stories of, you know, the people posting their very large losses. And the sort of thing did, of course, lead to the recent South Park episodes taking the <laughs> piss out of Matt Damon. Indeed. So this is obviously not great. And of course, right on cue, we have recent reviews, mostly negative, all reviews, mostly positive. Maybe that will change over time. Now, I think the fact, though, that the totality of reviews are still mostly positive, even though there's this extreme recent negativity, does show that this seemed to be an excellent game with excellent promise. And as a game, it probably still is an excellent game yeah. with excellent promise. It's just the worry about the stability of this company. Yeah. Uh, not financially, but... Uh, well, yes. Stability in, in that other way, Directionally, right? Directionally, yes. Yes, are, are people going to be worried that, you know, there will be a token, you know, attached to some of the cards, or, you know, they'll do something, right? That's what people are naturally going to worry about. Mm -hmm. And obviously they're completely right to worry about that. Yes. So to dive deeper, we've got their very own blog post about this. It's by, uh, well, their uh, content director. He goes by LSV Online, and he's an interesting guy for a game like this because he's a Magic the Gathering uh, Hall of Famer. So that's pretty major. Uh, the founder of Channel Fireball and a bunch of other things. So he's an incredible guy in the space. And he says, I've got exciting news to share. FTX US has acquired Good Luck Games. That's us. And we're thrilled we finally get to announce it. Uh, saying, you know, they started off quite recently, decently small, but in this blog post, we've got a quote from FTX. And this is, uh, this is, this is why people are worried. Mm -hmm. Outside of it being an incredibly fun game our whole office enjoys with its highly engaging gameplay and free-to-play model, we saw an opportunity to be the vanguard for the ethical integration of gaming and crypto transactions in a way that hasn't yet been done in this space. Uh, now, FTX already sponsors both limited and constructed resources, which are podcasts that LSV hosts, mm -hmm. right? So basically, it seems like LSV joins. He's got connections. Those connections happen to enjoy his podcast, mm -hmm. and then things start to form from there. So what is, what's, what's the plan? What is an ethical integration of crypto? Because at least by saying that, they're acknowledging that maybe like the pixel mons and stuff like that, there's a whole bunch of just grifter bullshit going on. Well, yeah. they say that when it comes to how blockchain fits into the picture, they can share their perspective where they're planning to go, but no specifics. I think if this was to be announced, it would have had to have had specifics yeah. that allay people's fears. But they say the guiding principles are that fun comes first, any integration has to be ethical and make the game better for players, and Storybook Brawl will continue to be a game that we are proud of and love, which is, means nothing. 
Yeah, that means nothing, nothing to, yeah. the, to this integration. Uh, basically, money, 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 bing, bing, wahoo. Because if we think about how, how is this crypto going to be, like how is a token going to be in this game? Right? Like, is, is this going to be, in, like if there's some sort of player marketplace for cards, then immediately you've got pay to win concerns. Damn right. Uh, because like, pay to win in a different way. Because with Hearthstone, it's pay to win as in, it's just throw money in and get the cards. Hmm. And eventually, because of like dust and stuff, there is a maximum that you can spend. But this, like, would they be wanting that? But where there is user defined value, which could probably mean that they could play around with the scarcity of items and do things like that to basically create a wholly, you know, insular to the game, Magic the Gathering trading card like situation. Because. Yeah, Magic the Gathering, like, that is a collectible card game, but you can just trade the cards to somebody else. I think uh, loads of people know the stories of the Black Lotus or whatever. Yeah, the Black the, Lotus, the, yep. And that's not a card you can play now, but it mm -hmm. was, like, a, just a very notable card for how much money it went for, um, right? There's lots of people who, even in the MTG space, they will basically buy the... It's like the new sort of pre-release boxes or whatever... Yeah or new sets, they'll like buy those almost as a speculative asset. Yeah, because it's got value to people, so obviously you can then gain that value, you can play that value, you can make money from that value, which I think has generally been a part of like card games, maybe not super uh, enjoyed by most people. Obviously some people get to enjoy it because it's kind of fun to play with that within the space, like you would in like the economy of World of Warcraft or something like that. But I think it's when it comes to the integration to these games, it always will just feel like, it will always have the same feel to people, which is, oh, so I'm getting this month, I'm getting this asset because it's got a real value, but people don't want real value to interfere with their games. And then you consider this being a free to play game, and you immediately think, oh, well, what's happened to every other free to play game that's had, uh, you know, actual real world value in items and in playtime? Oh, bots. So, you know, that even happens in Hearthstone, where they're just bots just farming stuff, and that's Hearthstone. So to, 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 sell the to sell accounts and stuff like that. Right. So then, and especially because you can, you just play cards. You'll maybe you'll eventually win if you've got a smart enough bot. So you know, is this would this game then be flooded with bots seeking to earn NFTs or seeking to earn crypto to thing it on? That's all stuff that people are worried about. So unless there's literally, hey, you know, the desk man go, hey, we know everything that's going to go wrong. Here's all our solutions. You can't just walk up and go, we'll do it right this time. Trust us. We don't yeah. know how, but we'll figure it out. We'll think about you as we're doing it. Now, of Doesn't course, work. they immediately launched an NFT. Yep. So FTX uh, released this Humpty, uh, free Humpty Dumpty NFT. Mm -hmm. um, there you go. Just get the NFT. Put, put that in your wallet. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, user response, <laughs> of course, uh, you know, not great. Hmm. Someone saying, you know, super sad about this. Makes me miserable. Smart people, a lot of energy wasted to make a handful of people very rich. Um, hey, dude, I understand the stigma, but I really don't think... Uh, they'll ruin the game, so yeah. But we do have some, yeah, sort of, sort of, uh, you know, dissenting opinion. Like, is it just that this is people who you know have a crypto exchange? Uh, that's like the thing that they do. They're yeah. also big gamers. They want to support the space. Mm -hmm. You could sort of say that. Maybe that is how they view it themselves. But it's just a humongously different perspective yeah. to what like people within the games industry yeah. actually have. And the Steam reviews. This is hmm. but a small collection. Uh, very <laughs> negative. Yeah, I think it's... Uh, the recent reviews are 380-something and 22% are positive. So you're looking at it, you're looking at multiple hundreds of negative reviews out of a total of like 2,700 overall. So I feel like it might have been overwhelmingly positive, but then these have just fluttered in. But like, we have to leave a negative review because they're going to use it as a test bed for NFT monetization. Yeah. That's not what you want in your video game. And that's sad because when you go through the older Steam reviews, yep. they are so positive. And, yep. you know, not only is it small flyby positive reviews, there's loads of reviews from people who have just played hundreds of hours. Yeah. This is clearly an excellent game that is worth paying. That's why this has made people sad. Yep, damn straight. But we might be able to give people a glimmer, a glimmer of hope, right? Mm -hmm. Are you ready for some hope? <laughs> well, taking a look at some uh, some data here, mm -hmm. um, Paul Tassi did a, a Forbes, did a write-up. And, well few interesting things right like in the gaming space with nfts nfts metaverse we you know we do see them spike we then see them fall off now i'd say there's two components to that yeah um like there's probably uh, just the usual hmm. like that's the usual fall. okay it's a mixture of there being a usual fall off because it's no longer the big news story hmm. that and i think uh people's 
anti-advocacy, I suppose, being genuinely effective. Now, I yeah. do remember seeing it was from a different publication, so I can't actually cite it right now. It was something along the lines of, I don't know if it was like the value of minted NFTs or maybe it was like the trade volume or something, but it was whatever that was on OpenSea, like month over month, had fallen tremendously. Thank you. So because of that, I, I feel like what's happened is that the gold rush phase for quick scheme grifters mm-hmm. is probably like, I think we're still in it, but I don't think we're going to be in it for a massive amount of time. Yeah, because it's losing a lot of its efficacy yeah. because of things like this. It's like, oh, are you trying to get in this? Nope. People just immediately erect the wall and go, no, we know what you're doing in this space. Get out. Yeah, I have a feeling some things that will still like continue to exist, like you know the the bored apes, yeah, some of, of those like collectives or clubs where mm-hmm. it's like they've all made a buy-in, and that means that just like any sort of person-formed society, they'll be able to derive some form of value from having a a powerful network that is hard to get into. Mm-hmm. But I mean, you think about what these have actually meant to the average person, and it's generally been nothing. Yep. We're now the most aware of the scams and of the bad shit. So I think it's going to peter out. Yep. Um, I think it's going to peter out, and whenever games try to do this, it's just going to be dogpiled on. Yeah, and it's like, I think it's sad for the developers of this game, because, I mean, I, I imagine they would end with, like, completely, you know, valid reasons for getting in. Like the uh, responder to that person on Twitter said, they're likely not doing this to make a bunch of money themselves. They likely think the tech is cool. They likely think that the, there is value in terms of, oh, well, people can play our game and maybe make some money out of it, you know, especially for, like, those who invest, you know, who've already invested thousands of hours into the um, the early access version. Like, yeah, that's all, that's all very noble, but people just don't want this. It's like they can smell the taint of greed on any of these things and how the impact will, you know, eventually... Basically, the corrupting force of money in your game. Yeah. Otherwise, just go, nope, stay away. Walls up, get out, get out and stay out. We don't care if you have good intentions. We just do not want this anywhere. And yeah. that's, a, you know, it's a cautionary tale and I hope uh, I hope more devs can actually see that because it's sad, honestly. Yeah, and it's one of the Venn diagrams. Yeah. The investor types, their Venn diagram of the opinions they see is not really going to line up with gamers. I think yeah. if you are looking at the Twitter timeline of one of these FTX people, <laughs> you know, it's people like, oh, look at this hot new Ethereum project. Look at this new, uh, you know, decentralized finance thing oh hey bro look at this sick nft collection that's probably what their twitter timeline looks like that's not what your and mine you know twitter timeline looks like so when that lot go and invest in us lot it just gets messy Mm -hmm. but i think people are making their voices hurt in an effective way so you know what keep on making your voice hurt yep i think um try to be somewhat reasonable about it but yes yeah yeah I, i would say it's probably there's something to be said about separating the inherent value of a technology to how it is used something about babies and bathwater, though the way that a bunch of crypto stuff ends up being used does make that a harder and harder position to actually keep so yep. it's all interesting. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's completely completely fine to have that ideal of well, okay, maybe uh, we shouldn't throw out the baby with the bathwater, but if you're trying to defend your own industry, I think it's fair enough to have a negative reaction. Yeah. So there we go. That's that. And uh, hopefully, this game is able to claw its way out of this because it seems like a genuinely great game. The developers and the players of this do not really deserve what the businessy people have done. Yeah, and I think th- there is one small problem with that. This isn't a partnership. They've been acquired. Can you really unwind that so easily? No. <laughs> yeah. No, because <laughs> they obviously did this with a plan. Yep. Indeed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I think they're just trying to have this game be a thin end of, of a wedge. Indeed. Yeah, so that's that. Let us know what you think. We'll see you next time.